Hi, my name is Maggie with Lighthouse Immigrant Advocates here in Holland, Michigan. This video is intended for our volunteers who will be serving as application assistants with our asylum clinic that's geared towards our Afghan clients. So thank you for being here. This will just be a brief overview of uh, the flow of things at the clinic, as well as the documents that you will be helping our clients uh, work on at the asylum clinic. So the client will make their way over to your station. And like I said, you will be working on three documents with them. Uh, let me show you what those look like. This first document is uh, what's called the G1145. This is a one page document that gives the client uh, updates about their case directly from U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, also known as USCIS, and that can go right to their email or text message. Uh, so that's just a one pager, quick and easy. The second one is a G-28. This document gives our attorney who will be representing them, gives us permission to represent them in different situations. Uh, this is a four page document. We'll make our way down here. But a lot of this, we will actually leave blank for Lighthouse to complete um, and for our attorney to fill out. So there will be some fields we'll have you fill out, but not all of it. And then the next document is an I-589. This is the actual asylum application, the big one. Uh, for your morning session with the client, you will only be completing the first four pages. I'll scroll through so you have an idea what that looks like. And then once you see the section marked as part B information about your application, that's where you stop. The afternoon uh, attorney will be taking over that portion of the application and just those first four pages are for you. Now, um, one other document, I guess maybe this would mean four documents that you cover, uh, but this is Supplement A and it goes along with the asylum application I-589. This is in the case that the client has more than four children. The original main application for asylum allows for four spots to fill out for their children. So if the client has six children, you'll need one of these supplement A. Um, it has space to fill two children. Um, if the client has four children, you'll need two of these documents in addition to the regular I-589 application. So, uh, those are the main documents. Uh, before you feel too overwhelmed, we have created a delightful cheat sheet. So um, it can seem a little bit daunting, some of the documents that we need to fill out, but we've already said what needs to be filled out and where. Another item of note, the client should be arriving to the asylum clinic with a completed questionnaire, which uh, has all of the answers that we need to input in the first four pages of the asylum application. So your job is really to uh, chat with the client and make sure that the information they've provided on the questionnaire gets transferred into the asylum application and make sure that we're clarifying certain points as well so that um, we have the most accurate information uh, provided to USCIS. Uh, this is what the uh, cheat sheet looks like. Let me zoom in a little bit closer for you. Um, this goes through those three documents and gives a little bit more detail. So here's the G1145. Um, simply fill out the client's last name, first name, middle name if they have it, their email address, and their cell phone number that can receive text. None of this information should be for Lighthouse because we do not need to receive updates about their case. We'll have that coming to us in another way. Uh, so this is that first document, G1145. Uh, no signature required, so we can move on. Uh, this is the G28, all four pages. Uh, again, this is the document that gives us permission to represent them in different situations. Um, the 
text in yellow is information that you will copy directly over from the cheat sheet right into the application. Um, anything labeled in pink is just helpful guides to know kind of what information should go in there, uh, kind of pointers or additional information that you may need, or letting you know to skip sections. Um, so look through that closely. As you can see with the G28, the first page, you won't have anything to fill out. The second page, there will be some items in yellow here that you copy over. These fields will be the client's information you'll find right on their questionnaire. Uh, page three, you'll check uh, a couple of boxes here. And then one item of note here, the signature. Uh, for the morning session as the application assistant, you will not have any signatures to deal with. That will be handled later in the afternoon after all application items are completed. The client will be signing with our attorney. So you don't have to worry about any kind of signatures at your station for the morning session. Also of note, you will not need to enter any kind of dates for today's session. So there will be date, dates of birth, uh, dates of uh, arrival to the U.S., all of that. But whenever there is a date um, for a signature, please do not fill out that field. We will be adding dates after the fact, uh, just because with government filing, it's important to have dates very specifically written and um, timed so that we know when the applications were submitted. So again, no need to gather any signatures or dates um, of the day that they're meeting with you for the asylum clinic. And then that final page is just the client's name um, and the rest you'll leave blank. So that's what the G28 uh, will look like uh, for the cheat sheet so you know which sections to fill out. Uh, moving along this cheat sheet is, is uh, the asylum application, the I-589. Um, if ever there are times where it, the question being asked uh, is not applicable to the client, you can type N slash A, which stands for not applicable. Um, and if ever there is something that the client does not know, um, they can write unknown. Um, there will be some fields that we definitely need filled out, but there will be some things that they um, either are not applicable or um, unknown. Okay, here is the cheat sheet for page, well, part of page one of the asylum application. As you can see, there are a lot of yellow fields here that you simply copy over. Uh, one item to highlight here is number seven. Um, it'll ask if we have um, any um, other names that the client has been known for. Uh, this is important because unfortunately on a lot of documentation, our clients have had misspelled names um, that we actually need to make note of them here. So um, whether they've had uh, maiden, maiden names, married names, um, those are also important to list, but please be sure to ask the client if any of their documents had different spellings of their name and make note of those here. Uh, this is just mailing address. will always be Lighthouse's information so that we have anything mailed to us. And then in pink here, these are those helpful tips. And I really wanna make a note of number 16 and 17 on page one of the asylum application because it references ethnic groups and religious groups. This is where we need to be pretty specific. And uh, especially for Afghanistan, um, there are a variety of ethnic groups that the client may um, belong to or um, be a part of. So um, if the client simply answered that they were Afghan, uh, we need to be more specific. Um, Oftentimes, um, when the client says that they're Afghan, the um, overriding ethnic group would be Pashtun. Um, so have them clarify. Say, oh, you're Afghan. Uh, does that mean that you're Pashtun or are you part of another ethnic group? Um, if the client is unsure, it can be very helpful to simply list off these ethnic groups to see um, 
how they might associate themselves and enter that right into number 16. Here are the spellings that we've followed. Uh, if for some reason there is an ethnic group not on the list that we've missed, uh, just check in with our program coordinator and they can um, clarify that information to make sure we have it correct. And then for the religious group, the majority of our Afghan clients do identify as Muslim, uh, but we actually have to be more specific than that. So if they say that they are Muslim, uh, have them clarify whether they um, follow Sunni or Shia beliefs um, and make sure to make note of that in number 17 religion. So if they say, oh, I'm Sunni Muslim, right? Sunni Muslim right up there. And then obviously the client could potentially identify as a different religious group too. Uh, we, uh, we don't want to assume um, someone's uh, religion at all, but these are the typical categories that you will come across. Again, if there is another group or you're unsure how to um, write their religion, be sure to check with the program uh, coordinator. Okay, we are still on page one of the asylum application. Um, but I've broken it down um, kind of piece by piece in these more uh, um, complicated areas. Um, number 18 uh, is uh, whether they are in any kind of immigration court proceedings. This would really reference um, if they uh, were detained in any capacity um, by immigration officials. Typically, um, our Afghan clients were not detained when they first arrived in um, the U.S. That's not the route that um, is commonly taken, unlike our Central American refugees um, or other groups. Um, but find out if they are in any kind of immigration court proceedings, and these boxes would be different ones to check depending on the situation. Um, number 19 uh, has to do with when they left their own country, uh, most likely Afghanistan uh, with this population, um, and when they arrived in the U.S. These uh, different dates are very important. Um, I know that uh, many of our Afghan clients, it was a very traumatic experience leaving their home country, so it may be difficult for um, them to recall the precise date that they had to flee Afghanistan, but try to be as exact as possible when filling out that date. Um, the I-94 number you will be able to find on their I-94 document, um, which they should have in hand. Um, obviously, uh, they will also have the questionnaire filled out so you can pull that information from there. But if you're having difficulty finding all of the dates um, needed to go in number 18, or excuse me, number 19, pull up their I-94 and this is where you can find all of those um, important uh, details to enter. Um, most of these are self-explanatory um, travel documents. Um, their native language will want to list here, check if they're fluent um, in English or not, and if they speak any other languages fluently. Um, I have in this cheat sheet many of the languages spoken in Afghanistan, uh, so you can reference these for proper spelling. And if we've missed one, uh, please be sure to let our project coordinator know so we can make sure we have proper spelling as well. Okay, moving along here, we are into page two of the asylum application. Uh, this is in regards to spouse and children. Obviously, if the client is not married, you can check here and skip this portion. Um, the same uh, sections here in regarding ethnic groups apply. Um, it's highly possible that the spouse and children um, identify as different ethnic groups. Um, so you'll want to clarify those questions with the spouse and later children. And then um, if the person is not in the US, um, you would click no here. And we do know of many family members that are still in Afghanistan um, that unfortunately have had to go into hiding. So if they are in hiding, um, obviously you don't need to list an exact address, uh, but you can give the general region or province of the country where they are currently living. 
Um, this information here continues on about the spouse. Um, if the spouse is in the U.S., they would be under um, a, a status, an immigration status of OAR. Um, I believe it stands for uh, Operation Afghan Refugee. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> but OAR is the status um, for our clients that are in the U.S. who came over um, from Afghanistan unless uh, they have very unique uh, immigration uh, connections like uh, different citizenship or something like that. But OAR is most likely uh, the category for everyone who would be in the U.S. from Afghanistan. Um, no need to check this box at that time. And then um, number 24, that box where you don't check, we'll have the attorney um, review that information. It basically, um, what we'd like you to find out and then later pass on to the attorney in the afternoon is um, whether uh, the children will be listed under this application or not. We'll hopefully have that information more clarified for you, but when kind of passing the torch of this asylum application on to the attorney in the afternoon, please be sure to clarify um, family members and uh, spouse and children um, to make sure that we are checking appropriate boxes at the end of the day as to who actually falls under this application. Uh, big note here, uh, if the client has more than four children, that's where we will um, use the Supplement A document later on. So when I typically finish uh, asking questions about the spouse, I move on to children and make sure I do a head count. So um, the main uh, asylum application, as I've mentioned before, has spots for four children. Um, so uh, see if you will need to use the supplement A uh, to add additional children. The information that you will fill out about the children is similar to what you would have just completed about the spouse, um, their A number, their ethnic group. Again, we've listed here. Uh, it could be different from um, mom or dad. Um, Again, if they are not in the U.S. Uh, and they are elsewhere and you are there in hiding, you don't have a specific address, uh, you can give the region um, or province. And then again, uh, no need to check that last bottom uh, box, set of boxes there. Uh, so you'll fill out one of these for the first four children and then move on to the supplement A for additional children. And that's, uh, here's a little copy of the Supplement A document. Um, we'll circle back to that one. And then the final page of um, the asylum application is about the client's background information. So previous addresses, where they're living now, um, education, um, and family members. Um, this, uh, you'll pull so much of the information from the questionnaire that's already filled out. Um, so you should be able to copy that information over. Uh, feel free to ask any clarifying questions if something's unclear. And then uh, let's just take a peek at the Supplement A document. Um, for each Supplement A document you need to fill out, be sure to include uh, the main client's um, A number, um, skip the date because we will fill out dates after the fact, put the applicant's name, and you'll skip the signature field as well. That will be handled at the end of the day. And you'll fill out the same information that you provided for the other children, um, uh, including um, uh, their ethnic identity um, from the previous page. You can take a look at those different groups. Uh, but pretty pretty much the same thing that you've done with the other kids in the main application. So that is kind of running through our uh, cheat sheet here and things kind of what to expect. Um, this cheat sheet will be printed in a binder at your station so you can flip through the pages as needed. Um, this last page is just a, a, an item saying, hey, you're all done, but go back and double check your work if there are any blanks. Uh, be sure to put N slash A or unknown um, and offer the client refreshments at this time. 
Um, the structure of the day will be the morning session with you filling out those uh, three documents. Uh, then you'll uh, have the client go um, enjoy some refreshments, uh, possibly some lunch, while you meet up with the attorney that will be taking over their application in the afternoon. Uh, double check with them that they're aware of uh, kids under this application, if they have a spouse, um, those kind of items and anything else that came up during your time with a client that they should be aware of. Um, they'll take over your laptop station and you can check out with the program coordinator. Um, and that's kind of the structure of the day. So we will have um, some frequently asked questions um, sheets for you at your station. Um, if the client has any kind of legal questions, be sure to save those for the attorney in the afternoon. Uh, we want to make sure that we're not giving legal advice uh, when we're not legal representatives, myself included. Um, but we want to make sure that the client feels um, informed about what the process looks like.